want to see me, Captain? Yes, I've got a letter for you, Tom. It's postmarked Washington, D.C. Well, this is it. They want me to report to Seattle on Saturday. Anson Adams. Admiral in six months. Hey, Admiral, you ain't in the Navy yet. And I ain't going to accept your resignation until you pilot in the Lock Haven tomorrow. much money for a while. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to frame that commission in burlap. <laughs> Whatever spot in the world. Hey, by the way, would you marry me? Well, it's about time you ask me. When? Mm -hmm. Monday, July 2nd, Seattle. Five minutes after I'm sworn into the Navy. I guess you are. But well, you're doing all right, too. Maybe the lock cave will be early too. For once in their life. Say, the Coast Guard patrol is going out to the point about the time the lock cave is due. You could go out on her and say Betsy's a trouble. No, oh, thanks. Betsy'd never forgive me if we didn't pilot in our last ship together. Ahead. Take both speed! 
tell you I was bringing them in. Is that why you turned around when you sighted us and ran for it, Mr. Adams? They forced me to turn around. This one had a gun on my back. Really, Mr. Adams? No good to lie. I tell you, I'm not lying. I got it away from him, knocked it overboard. Your man is very badly, Mr. Adams. Now we are caught. They're sure because I was bringing them in. They're framing me. But you were more than four miles beyond your regular station. Listen, Lieutenant. I was waiting for the lockheed. I decided to run out and take a look for them. I spotted these two being put overboard from a freighter. I never even expected to see it out there. I saw no freighter. You were inventing badly, Mr. Adams. I'm afraid I'll have to put you under arrest. Listen, Lieutenant. There's nothing else I can do. Why would I want to smuggle in a couple of chaps? That's for the court to decide. <laughs> Previously made, Pilot Bird was paid two hundred fifty dollars to meet us. We picked up the defendant at a point four miles beyond the regular pilot station. As soon as he sighted us, he turned and headed away from us. The lock haven didn't show up. I spotted a suspicious-looking freighter out there and headed for it. What was the name of the ship? SS Hanseatic, London, England. SS Hanseatic, London, England. Officially listed by the British Admiralty as sunk in Australian waters on November 10th, 1940. Has the jury reached a verdict? Yes, Your Honor. The jury finds the defendant guilty. Therefore, the court has sentenced you to five years in the federal prison at Blackport. Okay, kid, it's the screw in that pillbox up there. Tell the little man who you're looking for. I'd like... And don't sing your tonsils. The joint's wired for sound. Oh. I'd like to see Mr. Thomas Adams, please. I'm Nancy Johnson. Johnson, to see Adams. Larue to see Larue. Larue to see Larue. That's me, Billy Larue. Oh, what's his rap? Well, how long is he in for? What was he doping up to get caught doing? And don't tell me he's innocent. Well, as a matter of fact, he is. Isn't that a coincidence? Three thousand of them in here, every one of them innocent. Hey, you're sick, Lord. Why don't you look where you go? Oh, it is His Excellency, Senator Malloy. Hey, there's a chance for you, sister. He's head of the parole board. Why don't you tell him a little story? He only hears it three thousand times a day. Maybe I will. Gates. Take a load off your feet, because what I'm going to say to you will cut you right down to my size. Talk some more, baby. I like to hear you talk. Well, you won't like what you're going to hear, because I'm through, Monk. I'm washed up. Oh, sure, baby, sure. Didn't you hear what I said, you big gorilla? I'm scramming out of here. I'm fed up. I'm telling you goodbye. I'm going back to burlesque. The next bump I take is going to be for dough. Some guy bothering you. No. Don't you understand? I'm quitting. Oh, sure, baby. Sure. Nobody sentenced me to ten years of hard labor. Working my hands off. And for what? An orangutan who can't use his big hands like a gentleman. Talk some more, baby. Go ahead. I give up. They can't make him that dumb. So long, you big chimp. I'll be seeing you in 1948. Billy. Let me hear you talk some more, baby. Okay, dog answer. You win. Just another sucker, that's me. Sure, baby. Mm. 
from the prison. I've had the strangest feeling about George all day. What's your man in for? George got a long stretch for fraud, but he'll be out soon. Sugar, do you all have to slam the door like that every time? I'll get a load of this. It's got a little hair up. Why, well, Billy, honey, you flatter me. You bet your life I do. Oh, this is Nancy, a new fish. A new animal act goes by the name of Gwen. Hello. Hello. Oh, look at these hands. I used to have beautiful hands. Imagine a lady of my type spending my youth in a laundry for $18 a week. Imagine a lady of your type being a lady. I've had about enough out of you. One more crack like that, and that I... is Scarlet. Your southern accent slipping. She's jealous, honey, because I spent last winter with my husband, Tess, at Miami Beach. We stayed at the best hotels in New York and all over. Where's Tess to stop him now, sugar? Irregardless. He's a very wealthy man. He's got $60,000. And half of it's mine. The way I hear it, that $60,000 belongs to the National Bank and Post Company. 
You all be sorry someday when Chester tells me where the money's hidden. You all be sorry. Uh, so will Chester. Maybe I'd better come back later. Stick around, kid. All the animals in this zoo are harmless. Miss Barton will be here at six. She's always here by then. Just like a clock. Every day at six. man out right away. But how? None of the others will listen to me. But you're different. You listen to me. I've got a plan. It's all worked out. See? Oh, this is Nancy Johnson. She wants a room. You better get ready for supper. Just wait, Nancy. This room is nine dollars a week for board. But I have another room. It's a little better next to mine. Room. He's leaving us in the morning. If you have this room for $10. But that's a dollar more. This room is smaller than the other one. Yes, I know. But it has one great advantage. I'd rather not see that all the time. Mrs. Slade doesn't agree with you. She says it brings her son closer somehow. Just being able to see those walls. I'd rather take the other room. Very well. That's the signal for supper. The first signal. When it goes again, the men will sit down to eat. And so will we. But we, we don't have to eat when they do. No. But you'll find you want to. I'm showing you to in your room, Mrs. Slade. Please, don't, um, call me now. You've done that since you. Oh, 12. Come and have some supper. I better finish packing first. Then let me help you. No. No, thanks. How long is your man in for? Five years. But it won't be that long. Maybe not even a year. I hope you're right. But don't count on it too much. Every girl that comes here thinks the same thing at first. After that, she either quits or she waits. But we can't wait. We were going to be married. You learn to wait. The years pass. But I don't want the years to pass without Tom. Five years? That's almost a lifetime. Five years? That's nothing. Nothing? Well, maybe it's nothing to you, but... I don't know why you say that. All you're thinking of is five years of rent. You little fool. I don't want your money. You don't belong here anyway. Why, every woman in this house puts you to shame. Five years. My husband's in there for life. I wonder what you do if you're in Mrs. Slade's shoes. Why, well, she's leaving in the morning. Yes. She's leaving. With her son in a coffin. He goes to the chair at midnight. You can stay for the night, but please get up here tomorrow morning. 
A little more sacrifice is leaving. Can't take it, huh? I didn't think you could. That's the supper bell. Or maybe you're a little too good to eat with it. Sound of the gong, the time will be exactly 11.30. Our program of recorded music continues. The boy brothers escaped in the storm. They were rainstorm just like this. Electric. <laughs> Come to check the meters. <laughs> At this time of night? <laughs> Who do you think you're kidding, Mr. Peters? Hey, Countess, here's your boyfriend. Well, would you look at Miss Miami, all done up to make with the eyes. Where'd you run some glasses, sugar? Good evening, Mr. Peters. <laughs> uh, Mr. Peters is teaching me all about electricity. Mm -hmm. I'll show you downstairs. They're modest, isn't she? Rain any day to what it was like in the desert last year. Pete was doing a stretch at Yuma. You and Pete putting a good around, don't you? Seven clinks in 11 years. Regular crooks tour of America. Well, wow. LP the horse. Drunk again. Wow, about wet. Yeah, I'll find an inside boat. Where's old Lady Barton? Upstairs. Where have you been? I didn't know. A five-year stretch named Nancy. Only she's beating her bond in the morning. One night stand, huh? Yeah, I think she's taking me to sleep. That's going to be a very pretty sweater. Don't know why I'm finishing it. Please, honey, you just ruined my lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that I'm here, I might as well read the meter. <laughs> oh, Gwenny, did you tell your husband about us? Well, no. Now look here, Gwen. Oh, don't scold me, honey. Well, uh, I can't stand hanging around like this. You've got to tell your husband about us. Make him give you a divorce. But, Mr. Peters, honey... You know you haven't enough money saved up, have you? No. You think it's easy for me? Working like a slave in that awful blue bed laundry? Well, quit your job. I don't want you working. But, Mr. Peters, honey, I, I have to eat and have some place to sleep. Seventeen, eighteen dollars a week's very little to you, but... Seventeen, eighteen dollars a week? Oh. Well, well, call a bluebird in the morning and tell him you're quitting your job. Uh, don't you worry about the $17. Oh, Mr. Peters, honey.
years that the thief come on now, don't you? You'll be out and you'll have your best years together, like Joseph and I would have had. What do you mean? He was afraid I couldn't wait for him. He tried to break out. I gave him life. I'd like to stay, Mrs. Barton. And I'd like to have that small one the next year, the ten dollar one. Mm -hmm. Good morning. I didn't realize you were the Michael Malloy who won the Stanley case. You don't really remember that case. That was before you were born. I know. But other people remembered it. I had a civics teacher in college who did. The empty book packages for your speech to the jury. Oh, that was a wonderful cause you fought for. Yes, I guess it was. The odds were a hundred to one for a conviction. I remember waiting for the verdict. It took 36 hours. It was like a wake. Fooling of a jury with a frozen-faced undertaker. And when he said not guilty, it was as if a, a dam burst. Young Stanley wept. His wife wept. I'm afraid I did, too. <laughs> He gave me that uh, desk set. Never did work, but I keep it around. It, uh, it works in another kind of way. It reminds me. I don't understand. Why I'm here? As I told you before, that was a long time ago. I'm lucky you're here. I'm glad you're taking Tom's case. I'm not so sure it can now. But you promised you would. And I will. Yes, even if it means giving up another case. Thank you. Well, not at all, not at all. Sit down, Miss Johnson, and sit down. Tell me your story. This is the prison town, Miss Johnson. I'm sure you will appreciate the fact that very few of our parents would be broad-minded enough to accept a convict's fiancé as a teacher for their children. I'm sorry. Thanks. Everybody in this town is sorry. Oh, hello. Hello. Where can I find the boss? Where? That's him. Thank you. What do you want? A job. Nothing doing. Please, I, I want a job. I want to work here. Are you kidding? Look, sister, you come back at about five and I'll take you to dinner, maybe. But for a working dame, I'd like somebody with a little help. And you won't last an hour. Oh, no, look. Now, look, please. Well, you get out of here. Well, roll out the carpet. Getting kind of democratic, aren't we? What brings you here? I'm trying to get a job. Are you still here? I told you nothing doing. Oh, you big lug, give her a break. Haven't I got anything to say about who works around here? I don't need another girl. Sure you do. I told you this morning. Wynn's retiring. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll start you 15 a week. Give her Gwen's spot. Oh, thank you. Now get to work. Hey, look who's here. Billy, thanks a lot. You won't thank me when you see what a small crop of blisters a mango can raise. Well, I can take it. I don't know why any of us take it. Eight hours a day, six days a week. Take it on the seventh day, as the good book says. 
We can enter the pearly gates of Black Fort Prison. Pick up your hat and coat. I'll get your uniform. Aren't you glad to see me, Tom? Well, look at me. Man, you can't afford to come running down here every week. See, I didn't go home. I've been here all week. What are you talking about? How about your job? I work here now. You mean you're teaching here in Blackpool? No, but I've got a job. Doing what? Working in a laundry. In a laundry? Listen, Nancy. Please, Tom, I've had a lawyer. We're going to take your case to send it to the law. I've had my belly full of the law. You're wasting your time. Don't talk that way. How do you want me to talk? Please, Your Honor, I saw a couple of jabs drop off the Hansi attic. Of course, I know the Hansi attic was sunk, but I'm not a liar. It's just a, a ghost ship, a flying Dutchman. But you did see a ship called the Hansi attic, and some way we'll prove it. How, by calling the ocean with a butterfly net? But it's the truth, Tom, and you've got to fight for it. I'll fight in my own way. Well, I'll fight, too, in mine. All right, hang around here and be like these other women. Go ahead, throw your life away. I can't stop you. No, you can't. Maybe I can at that. Go back home, Nancy. There's no use hanging around here, because if you come here next Thursday, I won't see you. Do no. But it's been two weeks already, Judge Malloy. I was hoping I'd be bringing some news tomorrow. <laughs> you young people. Patience, patience, my dear. Perhaps next week. Do me a favor, will you? If you're going over to see Tom, will you take this letter to George for me? Well, of course, but why don't you go yourself? Oh, I can't. Why not? Well, they won't ever let me see George. But George is going to get away soon. I've got his escape all figured out. You know what, Nancy? Maybe George would let Tom in on the plan, too. Oh. oh, no. No, Winnie. I'm going to get Tom a retrial. Oh, well, you're not so because I asked, are you? I've got to hurry away. I'll be late. Miss Barton? You think that's not her name, sir? What are you doing? Don't! You couldn't take this to George. Why not? Because George doesn't exist except in his mind. He's been dead for years. But just tell me. If you only told me where the money was hidden, I could be using it to get you out of this awful place. It isn't the money, sweetheart. You know, I just went into the racket so I could get you things. Started with that nice coat. Only if you had all that money, I'm afraid I might lose you. Chester. Even that time on our honeymoon, no more than the day was spent. You got feeling depressed. He was gone for five months. But I came back, didn't I? And honey pie, haven't I been right here working like a slave, ruining my health and my complexion, just waiting for you? Sure, sweet, sure. I know you'll go through fire for me up to here. But I don't see why we have to stay here when we're so rich. I could be spending all that money on you just to get you out of here. Only maybe, if you got all through spending it, maybe I'd still be here, maybe. And maybe you'd get depressed again and you'd be gone and I wouldn't see you again for a year, maybe. Oh, you see what a spot I'm in, don't you, honey? Oh, Chester. All week I've been waiting, and then you don't tell me how you've been, or did you read a magazine or something? Hey, baby, don't tell me nothing no more. Ah, oh, help it if I'm in the dumps. That Johnson kid gives me the creeping willies. He's a sad 
sick there like she's gone nuts or something. You want me to talk to you? You tell that guy of hers to give the kid a break and see her. Okay, he'll see her. Uncle will fix it. And he'll tell me how you've been. And did you read a magazine or something? Talk to me like before. Maybe you call me ape again, huh? Sure, gargantua. Hey, what's the matter with you? Are you a cripple or something? You talk to your girlfriend next time she comes. Why don't you keep your nose out of my business, Monk? I don't know. All I know is that Billy says she's got the, the crawling willies from Nancy. Look, Tom, you're a nice guy. I like you like a brother. If you don't talk to your girlfriend next time, I'm going to bust your face. Right in the kiss her. You love Billy and you want to do what's good for her, don't you? You betcha. Well, I love Nancy. And I want to do what's right for her. She doesn't belong in this town, and she doesn't belong in any crummy laundry. Ah, uh, you know what I think? I think it's good for her. It'll toughen her up. You'll plenty of muscle. I like a dame with a hefty wallop. I like her the way she is. I want her to stay the way she is. All I know, all I know is that if you don't talk to Nancy, Billy will kill me. And if Billy kills me, I'll kill you. They're coming now. Mr. Peters, honey, how lovely. But you should have spent all that money just on flowers for little me. They cost 30 cents a bunch, but they're worth it. <laughs> I know, honey, but uh, I need a pair of stockings so bad. So bad is the only way you'll get them. You all just don't understand. Does she, Mr. Peters? I'm sure you'll pardon us. Mr. Peters and I are going to an electrical exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing, 100 Watt? Teaching her how to rig a hot seat for Chester? Oh. You see, that's what I mean. I don't want you living in a place like this. But, Mr. Peters, honey, aren't you forgetting? Why? We haven't got the money yet, have we? No, but I'll get it. Oh, Mr. Peters, <laughs> honey. <laughs> I'll do everything I can. Of course, I can't make you see him. I know, Father, but... Well, it's just that he's been acting that way for weeks, and... I want him to know that there's hope for him. Please make him believe that. I'll have a talk with him. to a country that's free, too. What do you mean? This morning, two hours ago, Japanese planes attacked us. Without warning, they bombed and killed our soldiers, sailors, and civilians. Right now, all over this country, 130 million people are getting ready to fight. Not only the Japs, but all men whose hate would destroy our country. Your country, too. They'll be fighting for your chance to come out into a free world. I was ready to fight for that, too. I still am. How can I? The important thing is that you won't. No. The important 
important thing is that I get a chance to. Look, Father, there must be other men out there. Hundreds of men who want to crack at those guys. Maybe if I talk to them, get up a petition. Maybe they'll let us fight, parole us. Go ahead, Tom. Talk to the men. Get up your petition. Go on. Try it. You still want me to give Vance that message? It'll be all right. Why doesn't he show up? Take it easy, baby. <laughs> Pretty soon he changes his clothes, huh? Well, just give me a crack at them jets. I'll mangle them. To your petition. Look your heart, baby. What's that say? In response to the petition of the Blackport prisoners, that they be paroled into the armed service of our nation, it's our considered opinion that. that Go on, Tom. Here, read the rest of this bill yourself. Please remind these convicts that to fight our nation's enemies is a privilege restricted to free men. Signed, John P. Malloy, Chairman Parole Board. But you don't understand, Warden. I offered to go in the suicide squad. Listen, the Army needs us. We know this racket. It's our meat. Warden, you got to make them understand. They're afraid we'll take a powder. Yeah, I was going to take a powder, a keg of powder, right down here at Hito's smokestack. Sorry, boys, but it's, it's not up to me. Let's go, guys. We've been suckers again, that's all. Wait a minute, Adam. The rest of you boys, too. I want you to know that I respect and admire your patriotism. It's the law. Your country's law. I'd like you men to go out of here feeling that. Not a chance. See, we're Americans, all right. Just like the man who wrote that letter. Only he's out there and we're in here. All right, let him do the fighting. Call it his America. Okay. But don't come sniveling to us anymore with preaching flax. Tom! Tom, what happened in there? What do you suppose? They turned us down. We're not good enough for them. Say that. I'll get you out of here soon. I'll get out in my own way and in my own time. He used to love you, don't you now? No. No, I don't. Is that clear? You, you just accept because it didn't happen in the dark. Get out of here and don't come back because I'm killing you, see? Sit down. Come! See by my color, and if I can be of service to you. I've got to talk to you, Judge, right away. Well, I'm busy right now. Why don't you call at my office tomorrow morning? I want to talk to you right now. Excuse me. It just won't come into solitary. The parole board meets tomorrow, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It's four as a rule. Well, Tom's case is in there tomorrow. His case isn't on the calendar. Well, I won't take no for an answer. Oh, my dear Miss Johnson, need a matter. I'm sick of you stalling your depositions and your hocus pocus. And don't call me my dear Miss Johnson. The meeting's at four. I'll be at your office at five. You've been calling me crazy for seven years. Because you're afraid. Because I've got a plan. Winnie, forget it. I've got it all worked out. I even got blueprints of the prison. I've got a plan that'll work. Winnie. All right, 
all right, but forget it. I didn't let her in on it. Go on. What is it? Spill it. Oh. Well, listen. Every Friday night, the freight boat comes to the jute mill. Yeah. Well, those jute bales are big. They're bigger than a man. Well, our men could haul them out and get into them. And then they lowered into the boat. And then, then when the boat got on the river, well, don't you see? Gee, it might work. That ain't so crazy. That plan's a killer dealer, kid. Huh, Billy? somebody to run the boat. Oh, but that's where Tom comes in. He used to make a living driving a boat. Tom Adams won't be part of any prison break. So don't count on him. You and Tom haven't been doing much talking lately. Maybe he'll feel differently about it after a few months in solitary. Maybe. Maybe tomorrow he'll be out on parole. Parole? Who's been giving you a high pole? Listen to a girl's parole. Oh, <laughs> Judge Malloy's before the board right now. He's putting Tom's case up to his brother. Judge Malloy is what? Vera, you've been took in spades. Why, he isn't even on speaking terms with his brother. He's a phony. That's not true. He's a great lawyer. He's won great cases. You're just saying that about him because you want to turn it on the break. Poor sap. You've been talking away, you dough. I don't want to hear anymore. All I know is that he's at the parole board right now, pleading Tom's case. The only pleading he's doing is for a crystal on the cuff at Hellerhan's bar. Okay, kid, tell me that plan again. Well, every Friday night, the freight boat comes through the jute mill. Judge Miller. Oh, Miss Johnson. I was just about to call you. Uh, Senator Malloy had to postpone the board meeting. Uh, the war situation. You see, he says... Yes, I see. You are a fake. Everything I've heard about you must be true. Oh, my dear child, you've been put up to this by evil intriguers. People who are jealous of the fact that the senator has promised a decision in your case. It's this very evening. Oh, how can you be so cheap? How can you lie like that? Miss Johnson, I will remind you you're making bold accusations, and in front of my friends, too. All right, then. Prove my wrong. Call the senator right now. I want to know his answer. All right. All right. I'm sure you. I'll prove to you once and for all. Harris me in front of my friend, and... I've got only bills, and who's got a nickel? Hello? This is Judge Malloy. Here. The senator's there. Thank you. This ought to teach you a lesson, young lady, not to listen to idle and malicious gossip. Hello. Hello, John. Uh, sorry to bother you again. No, nothing much. Just the Tom Adams case. You remember the one we were talking about today. Yes, that's the one. Where well, is John Splendid? Yes. Thanks a million. There you are. The senator is recommending a pardon. Dividend from the phone company. You ought to be over there behind this wall where Tom is. My dear young lady, our relationship has reached that delicate stage where there is no further point in lying. The truth is, you have no case. 
You never have had a case. I've misled you. I'm sorry. I'd like to be able to pay you back sometime. Thanks. Sometimes even that doesn't help. I just got a hot tip. They're getting out of solitary tomorrow. No. And the next day's visiting day. Think when he's done all work, it's got to work. We'll bring him Friday night. Friday night. What are you doing Friday night? That ain't no kind of talk, baby. I'm talking big stuff, Monk. Now listen. What do you do Friday night? Well, what do you think? The same old thing? Friday night we eat fish. Friday night we gotta work. What kind of work? We load the boat. We load the jute bales on the boat. They're beautiful jute bales, darling. They're bigger than man. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Get a shave, too. You need one. Yes, darling. I just gotta have money. Why, you can't expect me to arrange a getaway on $17 a week. I thought you got 18 What I mean is, things cost money. You just gotta tell me where you had the money, sweetheart. You just got to so we can be together again. It's a honey of a plan, Elsie. If anything goes wrong, I can take care of myself all right. I got a knife, see? Remember, the plan's no good unless you get Tommy to run the boat. I'll get him. I'll break his face, but I'll get him all right. I seem to answer you today, Tom. All through the visit now, she was just sitting there looking. Not talking. No, for me, she don't have to talk. You got some baby that time. How'd you like to see the baby, huh? Bust out of here Friday night? Oh. You're going through, love. Well, I was just taking something to the cleaner. Sure. Chester. Can you imagine that poor sucker falling for a dame like that? Walk him out on him when he's risking his neck just on account of you. If you'll please let me pass. Well, of course, sugar. Let her pass, girl. Here's a pass for Pete. <laughs> And this is for good! I'm skunky not telling her about the break. And have it give us away? Little Miss Innocent still believes in blows and pardons. Baby Glenn forgot a sugar rationing book. Where, where's Gwen? Why, Mr. Peters, honey. Wait, 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 it's a matter of life and death. She's thrown the switch on you. She's gone. Hey, now look, this is no time for kidding. Where's Gwen? She's got to be here. I, I got the company's money all mixed up. And, and the darn auditors are checking up sooner than I expected them to, and ooh, she was just holding the money. Three hundred dollars. Or a trousseau. Hot shot, you're a walking corpse. You're blind parlaying your three hundred into just to sixty thousand. Oh, There she is, girls. Just eight more hours and she'll be pulling away from the dock with a load of our guys. My stomach feels like a bunch of mangles. I eat too much. One good thing. After tonight, no more laundry. Maybe my guy will do all right for himself when we send out the wash. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be swell for Mrs. Barton, too. 
You mean her husband's in it? Sure. Mom felt sorry for the old man. I let him in on it. Well, back to the clink, girl. Tracer? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Come on, Nancy. News can wait. The dirty clothes go on forever. Prison law for trying to stop your crazy break. The rat. No wonder they knifed him. They were trying to save them. And they killed him. And even then, when he was dying, even then he wanted to help them. He asked me to go to the warden. Did you? What did you tell him? I told him nothing. You know why? Because I want that break to happen. Because I know it'll fail. No, I'm I'm talking to you too. Tell them so innocent. You're the worst of them all. You and your innocence, pretending you wouldn't mix in a break. What break? Take it easy, Ted. And when it's all over, don't any of you come crying to me because I'm through with you. With all the sympathy and help and love, I was really much to waste on you. What break? At nine o'clock. We were going to tell you later. He's in it all right. So? Now take it easy, kid. Well, let me go. You go to the warden. Get out of my way. Don't be a fool. They'll get time extra time just for planning this break. And our guy, too. You sing to the warden and Tom will wake up with a knife in his back. Is somebody getting a doctor? I don't 
you call the warden if you want to stop it? No. Don't come to me. Because if you only take the case to your brother, we can still I... save Tom. Oh, do you haven't got a case? Read that and tell me we haven't got one. All. Read it. Mexico nears war. Good, more the merrier. Oh, no, this. That's a pantheatic sunk. Another one, huh? Fish won't have elbow room to swim anymore. <laughs> Judge Malloy, don't you remember? The yes, answer pantheatic is the boat of Tom Crawl. Oh, there wasn't any. There wasn't any. We're so close to our Mexican gunboat. Lady, you have got a case. A whale of a case. Well, then plead it with your brother. He wouldn't listen. Make him listen. He won't even see me. Make him see you. I'll go with you. Oh, I don't know. I, mean, I think it's too late. I, I don't think it's in me. Judge, it's your kind of a case. Cause now, the kind of a cause that made you great ones, that made you a great fighter. Booze fighter, liar, fake, everything you said I was. You will be a liar, Miss Faith, if you turn me down now. You'll be sending to an innocent man by letting him break the law for the first time. I fought for the underdog in my time. I won all the lost causes. Lost my own. Go out and win it. You won't only be fighting for Tom Adams, you'll be fighting for yourself. Can't face the risk of losing. situation for us out of this. It's serious, but not grave. The question is, what does this senatorial committee bring back to Washington? Tompkins, I told you that I was never to be admitted. Well, he didn't admit me. I pushed my way in. You'll save yourself and me a lot of embarrassment if you'll turn right around and walk out. But he's been here for my sake. I'm here for my own sake. Please, Mr. Malloy, there's trouble at the prison. And you're the only man who can stop it. What kind of trouble? A break. Nine o'clock. Give me the facts and the men involved, and I'll phone the warden. Oh, no, no. Her young man, Tom Adams, is in it. He's the key man in the break. I came here to talk for him. What does it talk about? You'll have to take his medicine like the others. Listen, John. I haven't tried a case in years. But I've got a case to plead now. A case that he would want me to plead. Hear me out. Then if you want to call the warden to ruin more years of Tom Adams' life, you still have time. We've got some pretty important work to do here, Malloy. I don't care how important it is. A man's life is at stake. Well, we're concerned with the safety of 130 million lives. We're at war, Michael. Or haven't you come out of your saloon long enough to find that out? Yes, I've come out of my saloon long enough to find out a lot of things. You know what we're fighting for? Michael. I repeat, do you know what we're fighting for? I know why I am. For the right to my bottle, to sit around in a corner saloon. Yes, I stand up like you on the 4th of July and sing, Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner still wave? Wave or what? Over my booze. That's why I sing, but I'm only a drunken sot. A disgrace to my country. Over what does it wave for you? Just what do you want, Michael? The thing we're fighting for on the seven seas and five continents. 
the thing we're overlooking here at home. Justice. What's that got to do with the break? Get to your point. Tom Adams was jailed six months ago. He was convicted on the strength of a non-existing boat, the SS Hanseatic. This phantom boat, this figment of the imagination, has now become tangible, gentlemen. The French monk twin diesel. The kid could run it. Good, baby. Good. Not that one, Chester. Not that one. Oh. Oh. If this story is true, you have grounds for an appeal. Fine, and days, weeks, months will go by. Let's think in minutes. Now, 8.45, at 9, Tom Adams will make that break. All I need to do is to phone the warden and he'll stop it. By implicating Adams. By making him commit his first crime in the noble name of legal procedure. You're asking me to cover up a crime. The real crime is that Tom Adams was sent to jail in the first place. And if you let him make this break, you'll be as responsible as he is. You don't know what you're saying, Michael. as bad as Chester. Oh, I'm all right. Monk. What? Did you know about Joe Barton? No. Listen, Monk, I had to do it, see? I had to knife the old guy. He's a tall. Shut up. See, Tom Adams, John. Now, this minute. Let him know the singing glory of the just word freely given. Let him walk once more among his fellows, a free man in a free land. Long before that black day of December 7th, that boy sensed his country's peril. He was ready to leave his job and his girl. And she was ready to let him go because she knew that was the way it had to be. When he never went, an innocent man, he was shot away. On the day the enemy struck, he volunteered again. The answer was no. Twice denied. Don't deny him again. I, I don't know if I only had time. Time, time, time. Ten years ago, when Hirohito marched into Manchuria, we could have knocked his big teeth down his throat with a backhand slap. But China was far away. We had time. Six years ago, when Hitler marched into the Rhineland, we could have put him in a lunatic asylum. But the Rhineland was far away, too. Again, we had time. I know what you're thinking. That these are big things. And Tom Adams is small. Only one ordinary American. But he's part of this country and a part of you. And if he dies, part of America dies with him. Before nine o'clock, he must decide if he's worth fighting for. Now. I don't know about 
got to you, but I'm getting out of here. For good. Going off the deep end. Go on, go on, go on. Show my room. I'm taking Mrs. Barton. If I'm digging in for the duration, I might as well do it in style. Don't be frightened. Everything will be all right. I've been here for seven and a half years waiting for George. So you see, I know all the ropes. I can help you. I I want us to be friends. 